Good evening. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, it's time for our Wednesday night devotional. And uh, this story that I want to tell is, is from a book that uh, I actually heard somebody present uh, several years ago. Um, but it's very uh, been very meaningful to me uh, over the years, and I hope you enjoy it as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Our, our scripture comes from Matthew 6, verse 19 through 21. That verse says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Again, that's Matthew 6, 19 through 21. The gentleman that I heard uh, speak, and this was just on a, I think it was on YouTube actually, but uh, his name is John Ortberg, and he's written a book called When the Game is Over, It All Goes Back in the Box. So I want to read a couple of excerpts uh, from that, and I hope it's uh, beneficial in your uh, weekly study of, of, our, of our text this, this afternoon. So, life is like a game of Monopoly. You strategize, take risk, and wheel and deal to improve your position. But when the game is over, all the pieces go back in the box. When the game of life is over, your body is placed in the grave. Only eternal investments will follow you into eternity. To get the most out of life, you must arrange your priorities around what matters most. A life that focuses on temporary prizes will result in disappointment when the game is over. Life's greatest fulfillment comes when you love God, love others, and nurture your soul. The guy goes on to tell a story about him playing Monopoly with his grandmother, so let me just dive in. My grandmother taught me a lot about life on the Monopoly board. She was a brutal player. It didn't matter that I was only 10 years old. She played to win. But she taught me how to play the game. Through her influence, I learned the absolute importance of arranging my whole life in light of eternity. Maybe your grandmother was a pushover and allowed you to win every time, but not mine. The competitive spirit of my grandmother came out on the Monopoly board. She was a gentle and kind person, but not when it came to Monopoly. I tried to hang on to my money for as long as I could. I didn't like taking risks. My grandmother, on the other hand, knew that to win, you had to take risk. She bought up property, property as quickly as possible and mortgaged her property in order to buy more. Before long, she controlled the board. As master of the board, she squeezed at my resources and it was only a matter of time before my last dollar was gone. My race car was put back in the box and the game was over. Another loss. She always told me not to worry because one day I would learn to play the game. One summer, a friend and I played Monopoly every day, and I became a much better player. I finally began to understand what my grandmother had taught me about the game. The next fall, I experienced the greatest moment of my life. It happened on Marvin Gardens. My grandmother paid, her last, paid me her last dollar. I had beaten her for the first time. I completely controlled the board. But then she taught me one more very important lesson. When the game is over, all the pieces go back in the box. As much as I wanted to savor the thrill of the moment, the game was over. Is that not an accurate picture of the game of life? Life on earth is not going to last forever. This is true whether you're a person of faith or not. You may act like the game is going to last forever, but it doesn't. The author shifts gears here and tells a little bit about another story, so, so bear with me just a little bit. There was a young man living in Silicon Valley who normally worked 12 to 14 hours a day. Even he wasn't working. Even when he wasn't working, excuse me, his job preoccupied him. His wife constantly reminded him that he did have a family. He knew his kids were quick, quickly growing up and that he was missing it. In his heart, he kept rationalizing that things would settle down soon and that, after all, he was working all these hours to provide for his family. High cholesterol and high blood pressure warned him that he needed to eliminate the Twinkies and start exercising. But there would be plenty of time for that when things settled down. His wife begged him to go to church, but Sunday was his crash day. 
Things were booming so well in his business that the COO challenged him to lead the company through a technical, technological revolution. If successful, it would, he would be set for life. If this kind of it's this kind of challenge that he lived for. By now you're probably recognizing that the above account is a modern day replication of Jesus' parable of the rich fool. It, interestingly, Jesus didn't refer to him as wicked, just a fool. Why? The man didn't set out to defy God and neglect his health and family. His goal in life was not to become greedy and obsessed with work. He simply developed a lifestyle that focused on the wrong things. What mattered most to the fool were large crops and bigger barns. He wanted to eat, drink, and have fun, not die. Jesus communicated life's most important objective, be rich towards God. When the game is over, what matters to God is growing a healthy soul, loving others, doing deeds to improve the world, being generous, and living every trip around the board to its fullest. Jesus clarified this objective by stating the two most important commandments of all, love God and love people. You love him by spending time with him and thinking about him all through the day. You love him by seeking his guidance and by thanking him for all his blessings. And tomorrow you seek to love him a little bit more. All the material stuff of life is temporary. It all goes back in the box. TV, cars, houses, jobs, it's simply just stuff. What we need to invest our life in is loving people. You can take people with you into heaven. When you take, when you take your last breath, what do you want your life to have been about? Stuff or people? Please don't hear this message as we don't need to be concerned about day-to-day -day things. Being prepared in life is important in all aspects. Let's just make sure we have a good balance in the worldly things that we need to take care of. Let's spend some time reflecting on what is temporary and what is permanent in our daily lives. Let's invest our time, effort, and talents into things that are permanent, which should align us closer to God. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. God, I thank you for this time that we can stop during the middle of a week, a busy week, and, and reflect on you, God. I pray that each of us would pause and really truly reflect our own lives and what we are focused on, Lord, what we value, what we cherish, and that those things would be eternal and not earthly things. Lord, there's a lot of distractions in this world, but Lord, help us to always remain focused on you and what we can do to better our relationship with you and better our relationship with people. God, there are a lot of needs out there, a lot of hurts, a lot of pain and suffering. Those that are sick, those who have lost loved ones, Lord, we just thank you and, and lift, uh, lift, thank you for hearing those uh, concerns, and we know that you're involved in each situation. God, we thank you for all that you do for us. You're so very good to us, Lord. You give us new chances, uh, second chances all the time, each and every day. And we're just so thankful for that. And that wouldn't be possible without our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for all you do for us, especially that gift of Jesus. It's in his holy name I pray. Amen. Thank you. I hope you guys have a great week.